to think 25 years ago this month is when Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara, two guys who were largely responsible for some of the television shows that we have been seeing through the WWE, at least the writing aspect, yeah. they just abruptly quit the promotion and signed with WCW over the weekend. It was the, uh, the first weekend of October. And Dave Meltzer said this, Russo in various interviews cited the burnout factor of working so many hours with the added stress of the SmackDown show as the main component of his approaching WCW. First through J.J. Dillon, and then closing the two-year deal after lengthy meetings with Bill Bush on October 2nd, signing the contract in Atlanta the next morning. He stated on WrestleLine that he was drained from being on call 24 hours a day for nearly three years and that he needed to spend more time with his family. This is um, this is big news. How do you first hear that Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara are going? I think Vince said they were taking off and going to move to Atlanta and, and do their business there. So uh, I can understand Russo's logic. I mean, they were working a lot of time they should have added more staff he should have added more staff i think in hindsight yeah to, to his staff to his group it would have maybe eased the burden of his workload but those guys did work uh they they had a lot of uh they had a lot of balls in the air so uh like vince told me but you know we didn't miss a beat we just kept on rolling and uh and it worked out fine at the, at the end of the day. I mean, look where WWE is today and they're doing very well, obviously. So at the end of the day, things generally work out if everybody's on the same page and they got Vince back more engaged. And I think that was a good thing at that point in time. So, uh, it was still a little bit, uh, surprising. You know, I, I would have thought that they would have come to some sort of happy compromise prior to the final decision being made that, that both Russo and Ferrari left. But, you know, we had a lot of people on staff that could could do their job. They might not do it as well. I don't know. That's all subjective. But uh, it was a it was in a, it was an interesting time, to say the least. But I thought that the company reacted positively. And I thought that, you know, the results of this show we're going to talk about today is evidence of that, that, you know, we had some depth and we had some, you know, we had people there that Patterson and Bruce, myself to a lesser degree. And so it, and Vince, of course, so it was pretty good. And we had some talents coming into their own, you know, the tag match of the Hardys and edge and Christian was extraordinary. So, uh, that bailed our ass out of that show. So it was good. It was good. What do you remember Vince's reaction being, uh, to the news that, you know, he had two guys who had been a big part of the success behind the scenes. We've, we've often talked about Vince's reaction when, you know, uh, something with Jeff Jarrett or Lex Luger or, you know, Medusa or one of these big acts show up on another channel. We've talked about that before, but I don't know that we've spent a lot of time talking about Russo's exit. H how did Vince react to that news? Uh, I think he was surprised and not in a pleasant way. That's a nice shot there of, uh, Michael Cole on the left and the, and the boss Ferrara and Russo. And they, they, they did a nice job. They, they had, they got, you know, the results speak for themselves. Uh, but they, they just were burned out and they tagged out too late. I mean, they got to the, they got to the end of the rope. Uh, unfortunately, and a lot of the talents are concerned because they had built relationships with Russo and Ferrara. Uh, they had a source for creative, uh, you know, they had a resource, I should say. So it was, uh, surprising, you know, surprising that they left, you know, I didn't see them on the way out. Uh, I didn't, I just know that, uh, it was a surprise. And, and not a pleasant one because there were two main players that, uh, we had to replace in, in key roles and didn't have any time to regroup because we had another show to do, which is what we're going to talk about today. So it was a interesting time for us there at WWE. 
What's interesting to me is just the timing of all this. You know, as as I understand it, you know, the meeting happens on October 2nd. He signs the contract on October 3rd. He's supposed to start TV on October 11th. That'll be his first day reporting to work. And this that's going to be like 8 days before the WWE goes public or WWF at the time. Yeah. It does feel like to me of all the times to jump ship I don't know that I would jump ship before the IPO. Yeah. It feels like you might have some leverage and, and have an opportunity to make some more money or at least have a conversation with Vince. And I, I believe Russo had tried to express his frustration before. And I think to hear Russo tell it something along the lines of the straw that broke the camel's back was that when he was complaining about not having time with the family and, and so forth, Vince said something like you make enough money, hire a nanny. <laughs> uh, because of course Russo had been riding raw and now he felt like he had SmackDown dumped in his lap and that meant twice as much work, which meant twice as much time away from the family. He just didn't think he could do that. And I guess that was the straw that broke the camel's back for Vince uh, Russo rather, but it does feel like to me, man, we're just days away from an IPO. Yeah. Not good timing on Russo's part. Cause yeah. he, I, I can promise you that he'd have gotten uh, stock. Right. Probably yeah. a lot. Yeah. I got a lot. I, I, I and I, it came in handy. I mean, uh, it's six figure deals and uh, a lot of, a lot of stock and, and, but it was also new to all of us. I wasn't really sure what I ha had. I didn't realize how good I had it because I was not a stock guy. And, uh, but it was, it was, uh, Interesting, as I said, interesting times. Uh, the Russo and those guys, maybe if they look back at it, he just stayed another week or so and let the company go public. And then right after the, pu the company went public, uh, Vince started doling out stock. I know Kevin Dunn and I got a ton of it. And uh, I just so feel like Russo would have too. And by the way, at the time, the stock was opening at a $30 price. That was the original IPO, $30.50. And now today, as you and I are recording, TKO stock is at 128 and a half. Wow. I mean, it's just a gargantuan amount of cash that I feel like maybe Russo left on the table without, if you remove that IPO piece of business, or maybe you were even thinking about that back then, what did you think of the decision that Russo and Ferrara made to leave the WWF who by October of 99, where they're clearly in the driver's seat in these, in these Monday night wars to go to take off the winning team Jersey and put on the losing team Jersey for lack of a different term. Yeah. That's a head scratcher to me. What do you make of that decision? I'm with you on that deal. I'm, <clears throat> it was also a head scratcher to me. Like I said, in hindsight, if, if they'd have hung around for a little bit longer, they'd have, they'd have found some, some, themselves some new money. And uh, we all love new money, no matter how we, as long as it's not illegal, uh, we, we, that's kind of what we go for. And it was a brand new concept, you know, pro wrestling and stock just never went together before. And of course, subsequently, as you pointed out, the stock now is out the I still got stock. Uh, someday I'll sell some of it. I'm maybe sooner than later. Hell, I don't know. But it's a, it's a really, a, a, it was really challenging. And I think all of us are just kind of how we're going to regroup. You know, I'm sure Bruce has stories about that as well. Uh, but it was good. It was, it was, it, it, sometimes change, change doesn't always have to be negative. And there's a lot of people in this world that believe that, you know, any change is bad. And I don't, uh, I don't concur with that whatsoever. Uh, it's just, it gives you a chance to reset your, set the time the timer, the clock or whatever, and, and make, and start over, get a fresh look, fresh set of eyes, shall we say. But, uh, you know, they did a great job while they were there, no doubt, but they just got burned out and they didn't raise their hand soon enough. I feel confident that Vince would probably would have, uh, helped them out a little bit. Uh, you know, like I said, they just need more staff. They're two guys. And, uh, and they may have made it harder than they needed to. I don't know. They may have overreacted. That's 
all up to opinion. So uh, it was a, a changing times. But when times change, you just got to come back and make it better.